Hey everyone, I'm Benjamin Reese. I'm the program director at the Case After School program. So I work with community service here at GOD International. If you didn't know community service, we serve three major populations. So widows and elderly, immigrants and refugees, and at-risk youth. And in order to serve these populations, we've developed a number of really excellent programs in order to help and, and provide various services to these groups. And some of them you're going to hear about uh, in these, as people sort of explain some of the causes that we're trying to raise money for. So I wanted to encourage you uh, to listen to the following with an open heart as we take time out of our normal schedule to contemplate the humility uh, of our Lord, uh, somebody who can sympathize with our human weaknesses, who knows uh, just all of the different struggles that we have as people, and who has a desire to develop a body here on earth that can respond to those needs. Just today, I got a call from a mother uh, who wants her child to join the after-school program, and she just got a new job and needs somewhere for her um, kid to be after school. And it was really wonderful to uh, provide, in that moment, a free after-school program that's both going to help her pursue employment to support her family and provide a safe place for her uh, student, and I know that what we're going to offer that student is going to be quality. So I pray that you would just open your hearts as you listen to these causes and as you consider uh, how you can give and be charitable this season. Thank you so much for listening and for opening your heart, uh, and I hope you have a great Christmas. Good morning. My name is Ryan McAllister, and I am the manager of the high school internship program that is a part of the Summer WorkWell program. Every summer, WorkWell employs around 50 young people ages 14 to 24. They're given an opportunity to work in an environment where they are connected with a mentor, get to participate in life-giving work opportunities, and get a chance to learn valuable life skills that translate into other career paths as they mature. I have had the wonderful opportunity to participate both as a recipient of the program as well as a leader on the team for the past three years. And it has been my great pleasure to get to see how this summer experience has changed and impacted both my life and the lives of people who participate in it. The need that we're trying to meet with the WorkWell program is to help cover that awkward yet immensely important time frame where young adults begin entering the workforce. A healthy work environment and understanding management can build confidence, increase capacity, and prepare the way for a healthy future. But without the right support, the experience can do the opposite. Instead of acting like a milestone in the youth's life, it can be a pitfall. I know that was my experience when I first began working. I shifted between jobs multiple times. I found myself in work environments that surrounded me with people that instead of encouraging me, made me feel like work always has to be something that drains you and leaves you empty. But we don't want that to be the case for these young people. Shouldn't have to keep continuing like that. Instead, we are giving youth work that inspires them, supports them, and most importantly, mentors them in how to navigate the realities and challenges of work, rather than just be overwhelmed by them. My first year with the WorkWell program, I got to meet a wonderful young woman named Anija. Anija wants to become a missionary medical worker. When I asked her how she planned to do that, she told me she wasn't sure. She didn't know what avenues to follow, and she had settled on deciding to go to college and trying to become a medical doctor. This decision was made with a lot of hesitation and fear, rightly so, as Anija comes from a large family and medical school is very expensive. So she was thinking through, how am I going to pay for this? How would I pay for it uh, if I have to help support my siblings? She had a lot of things that were going on in her head, but she didn't know another way. Well, as a part of our WorkWell program, specifically in our high school internship program, we connect participants with professionals in their career interests. So I connected Anija with the amazing life-giving professionals at Hopewell Family Care, who allowed Anija to train with their staff, interview their management, and talk with other employees about their journey in the medical field. This gave her vision to understand the options that were available to her and helped her see that she doesn't just have to follow the prescribed pathways that society wants her to follow, pathways that often leave people burnout and hurt. 
At the end of the summer, she was able to say that she walked away from the program with a greater confidence in herself, a clearer idea of what she wanted for her future, connections to professionals in the field of work that she wants to be in, and a hope that she'd be invited back the next summer to keep working with us. I can only imagine what that would have felt like when I had been her age to have something like that. Now, we can't make these life-changing moments happen without your help. This holiday giving campaign, we we're hoping to raise $17,300 to be able to train mentors to help facilitate more moments like these. Please take time to pray and consider giving. I wanna leave you with a verse. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's Matthew 6, 19 through 21. This holiday giving season, you have a chance to invest your treasure and your heart to the next generation. I pray and hope that you'll consider donating to us. Thank you. Greetings, my name is John Nyago. I'm the community coordinator for the Refugees and Immigrant Program. I specifically work with the Congolese community as well as other refugees and immigrants from Africa. First, I want to thank all of you that have over the years supported our refugee and immigrant work. We have seen so much good, really life-giving and transformational empowerment in the lives of the refugees and immigrants that we've worked with over the years. A case in point is with a gentleman called Budamo Ruterera. Ruterera desperately needed to get a driver's license, but he couldn't because he did not know enough English to pass the driver's test. He's 51 years old, has a family of eight that he needs to, you know, take kids to school, to go to the store, go to church, go to work. And all of those things, he could not do them because he didn't have a driver's license to be able to drive. In 2018, he joined our program and we started working with him, teaching him English. And as we speak now, Ruterera has driver's license, he has a car, and he's able to do all of those things that he used not be able to do, that he couldn't really do without our effort and your support and your effort uh, towards this work. So we are very thankful for all of you that have been supporting. Your support has truly changed lives and continue to bless our refugees and immigrants. This year, our goal is to raise 36,000. So far we've raised $1,177. So I'm here to ask on behalf of Ruterera, on behalf of other refugees and immigrants that need this kind of support and help and education and empowerment for your donation towards these efforts. These funds will go towards providing 80 hours of uh, live instruction by certified ESL teachers. Help to provide scholastic materials that students and teachers need to be able to facilitate these classes, help to secure uh, locations and space and fit this space with the resources that are needed to facilitate learning, um, as well as facilitating everything that you know, such a program would require. We are very grateful and we are hopeful that you will join us in this effort. Thank you so much. May God bless you.
Hi, I'm Laurie Mowdy, and I'm the coordinator for the Widow and Elderly Care Program for GOD International. The mission for our program is to bridge the generations between young and old through awareness, intentional services, and social interaction. Each week, I have the privilege of coordinating sending out the teams made up of young students to all the um, elderly care facilities that we've worked with for a number of years um, facilitating relationships, getting to know them, and they have come to really cherish and enjoy the weekly visits that our students give. One of the challenges that this vulnerable population has is the experiencing loneliness, especially during and after COVID. Studies have shown that social isolation and loneliness are a serious risk health, often leading to depression and sometimes even premature mortality. The elderly also have physical limitations that keep them from doing daily tasks. This is where our program can help. So what our students do is they come weekly to clean the apartments of the elderly. They play games with them, they open mail, they do puzzles with them, and the ladies especially enjoy when we paint their fingernails. A frequent request that we get from the residents is that our students come and sing and play instruments. Another resident here is Dr. West, and she has come to depend on our students coming every week. They have definitely helped clean her apartment, but what she tells us that she enjoys the most is the time that she gets to pray with our students. Hey, my name is Dr. Gerald, G-E-R-A-L, Smith hyphen West. And I am 80 years old. My eyesight is very limited. I had surgery in April and uh, my eyesight was damaged when I had surgery. I don't see as well as I need to. I believe this is the eighth week that I've had people coming to visit. You know, as, as the group was coming down the hallway, I had turned my TV off because I knew it was about time and I want to hear them when they're coming mm -hmm. so I can get up and open the door because I'm so excited that they're coming to see me. When they first came, they helped me get my apartment clean. But the other thing that I'm really impressed is that you all are dependable. I like that. I like the fact that no one is too shy to talk about how good God has been to them. I'm excited about the fact that you don't re you don't forget who I am. That really helps me. And I don't know how you all feel about me, but I know I love you. I just want you to know I love you. And I look forward to you coming every week. But I'm so excited that you all think enough of me to come to check on me, just to say hello. I save things for you to look at. Please look at my mail. Uh, last week, I couldn't find my checkbook. I said, come on, you gotta help me find my checkbook. Mm -hmm. They found my checkbook. Whatever I need, everyone is so very nice to help, and they help me keep my apartment wonderful. So I don't know, I don't know who is the person that started, that began the school that you all have. But I am so glad that they did because we need you over here. I need you over here. No one else, I need you over here because I love to talk to everyone about the goodness of God. One of our institute students, Jerron, shared with me that through this experience, he and his peers have been able to discuss and model the actions of Jesus, to call these folks by name, and to treat them with dignity. So we need your help to continue providing these services. We have a goal of raising $13,000. So far we've raised almost $730. These donations go for purchasing cleaning supplies and all of the enrichment activities that I've just talked about. Yearly, also, we offer a professional portrait session for each of the residents, and then we gift them that portrait for free. This year, as you can see behind me, we are distributing 200 filled uh, bags that have toiletries in them. And we were able to bridge the generations by asking our uh, case students, our academy students, and even some of your young children to decorate the bags. When you give to this campaign, you are providing the elderly with education and they're using the internet so that they can be safe. You are providing a widow with a clean and safe environment. 
You are giving the elderly the joy of young people who genuinely care for them and will bring light into their sometimes very lonely and dark world. By giving to this cause, you are providing an opportunity for our institute and our academy students to develop capabilities to serve the vulnerable population. I'm asking you that you go to the Genuinely Concerned for the Elderly website, look at the causes, and prayerfully consider investing in the widows and the elderly that are our neighbors. Thank you.